Ricky Stenicki is currently streaming on Amazon Prime Video. Now, this is not a recommendation for me. This is somewhat of a rant. This comedy stars John Cena, Zac Efron, and William H. Macy. Now, this film is, in this form, very dated. Now, what is this film about? Zac Efron and his childhood friends, to get out of trouble, they created this imaginary friend who became a legend in town who would do these wild, crazy things and get away with it. And they used this imaginary friend, Ricky Snicky, to get themselves out of trouble. Well, they continued to use the legend of Ricky Stanicki even into their adulthoods and in their relationships to get out of obligations. Well, this lie starts to come to a head when their respective partners, their family starts figuring out that this was a lie and that Ricky Stanicki couldn't possibly exist. So they venture out to find a, a Ricky Stanicki who could play the part so that their lie can continue on. And they end up meeting John Cena's character, who plays Ricky Stanicki. He is somewhat of a, an exotic dancer in Atlantic City. And he agrees to play Ricky Stanicki for this bris that one of them are having for their newborn child. Ricky is so committed to this role that he studies and stays in character so that if necessary, he would be able to improv to prove that he is the real Ricky Stanicki. And the bit gets so good to him because this is a better life for him, this new identity, that he refuses to come out of character, which ends up impinging on the lives of his new friends who really need him to be distant so that they can continue the bit. So that's the overall concept of the film. And listen, 10, 15 years ago, this would have worked. It really would have because again, this was written around the time when it was working. Now it doesn't work uh, because it, I don't know, it's just not as funny um, as it would have been back then. John Cena, I can understand why they cast him in this role. Initially, Jim Carrey was attached to star as Ricky Stenicki. He pulled out and eventually James Franco agreed to star as Ricky Stenicki. But because of 127 hours, he pulled out and it had been in development hell for at least 10 years. Eventually, Peter Farrelly had come on board and did a few passes with the comedy bits. There are several writers over the years who had tried to beat up this script to make it work and here we are with this one i feel like i understand somewhat why they would cast john cena because he is okay with this self-deprecating humor because he's such a towering figure like will ferrell he used to take on roles like this all the time and he even did old school which is very similar and i just feel like it's getting old. Like John Cena is getting a lot of opportunities, but the opportunities just aren't working because the bit is getting old. I understand why he does this self-deprecating humor like he did even shrieking at the Oscars, but eventually he is going to, I would think, have to show more than this level one acting ability. Eventually, I think if, he, if it's gonna have any sustainability, I think he's gonna have to go deeper than, you know, this lampoon, slapsticky comedy, especially as he ages. I feel like there have been movies that have done this whole bit better. Now, this is very similar to The Wedding Ringer, starring Kevin Hart, which I don't think was good, but there have been good, you know, failure to launch, frat boy, we refuse to grow up, we refuse to take responsibility type of movies like The Hangover, Wedding Crashers, Old School, and the very best of them, pretty bad things. They've been done better, but they were done so long ago. Now, it's just not working anymore. We have progressed as a society when it comes to comedy. So this just felt very dated. Even the technology in the film is very dated. So you can just tell that this was filmed or this, this took place like right after the pandemic. Like it's, it's just dated. I don't think it works. And I feel the same way about Zac Efron. I think he should have done what James Franco did and pulled out because he was so fantastic and bold. I even think he was great in the greatest ever beer run or whatever that bit was. He was really good. He showed his chops in there. And of course the Iron Claw, which had so much awards buzz associated with his performance. And I, I feel like these 
movies set him back. I think he should have passed on this. And I think John Cena should have passed on this. Zac Efron has no chemistry with his on-screen wife. I mean, even their embrace felt so standoffish as if they hated each other in real life. No one is believable in their roles. No one convinced me that they were born to play these roles. It seems so miscast. It's a jumbled mess, really. It's not good at all. I don't even like trashing movies like this because I know what it takes to really make a film. I understand that it takes a lot of equity and sweat and work and money and the whole bit, but this is just bad. We deserve more than this. I mean, Amazon bought MGM. MGM has some of the best archive IP in studio history. And it is digging up these, the, the, some of the worst projects that just don't make good sense. I don't know if it's about, you know, a quick turnaround, cheap to produce, or what it is, but they're just picking the wrong films. You have an entire archives, 100 years worth of fantastic IP, and you're picking Ricky Stenicki. Come on, Amazon. <laughs> like, from my perspective, I don't see how you could pick Ricky Stenicki and say, oh, we're going, this is going to be a winner. It doesn't make any sense. I think it's time for these platforms to listen to the audience because they don't have a pulse on what we like or want at all, lately, for sure. At any rate, Ricky Stenicki is currently streaming on Amazon Prime Video.